episode of Hidden Stories Healed Now. If you've been following and watching all of our seasons, you got the opportunity to meet our guests that's here today previously. Tiffany Green Amdella. She was talking about the history of family and the things that she was learning and where she was going. And I got a lot of requests to say, we can't wait to hear what happened and how things turned out. So we're here to hear the end of that story. And I'm so glad to have her with us. Welcome. Thank you, Vicki. So where are you in this journey of, I know you were collecting all this data and information. Mm -hmm. You were meeting family that you had never met before and gaining relationships um, as you were moving forward. You said that you were going to be um, looking at writing a book, mm -hmm. et cetera. So love to hear about how things turned out. Well, things are still turning, <laughs> but um, I am trying to finish the book up. And the book has had some, some twists and turns, which I, I can share with you all here. Um, but I am trying to finish up the book in the next two months so that it's hopefully, God willing, published in December. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the twists and turns. So last time I was here, I had gotten my mom to do Ancestry, yes. to do the DNA test, mm -hmm. um, because I had found my, um, my, well, I don't want to tell it, but my half aunt. Yes. Right? So I found my half aunt. She did a DNA test. I had my mother and my cousin, who's the son of my uncle, do a DNA test. And I got the results back. So the results were that who I thought was my grandfather is not my grandfather. So I am, even though I have the green name, I'm not a green, uh, which was, which was, I mean, it was kind of what I thought, what I suspected, but like going through and going through the DNA and it's like, I don't see no greens on here. <laughs> like, who are these people? <laughs> like, so looking, you know, trying to figure out like, okay, what does this mean? Who is this person? Who are these women? What are these new names that I'm seeing? And, and like, you know, how do I take that forward? How did you feel? You looked at this DNA test, even though you subconsciously knew, how did you feel? Um, it was scary. Cause it's like, I want to know these other people, but like, that's kind of weird. Just like emailing somebody or saying, Hey, you're my cousin or you're my auntie or, you know, so I was scared to, to, you know, to talk to them. But I mean, I did, I have spoken with the family and had um, some very um, colorful conversations <laughs> <laughs> about my, who I know, who is, you know, my actual biological grandfather. And it, again, opened up more questions then. It gave me answers, but then it created more questions. How did your mom deal with that? My mom, you know, my mom's interesting. She was like, yeah, well, we kind of figured something was up because she had heard throughout her life that her father wasn't her father. And so she really was appreciative of me pushing her to open up and pushing her to to do the, the genetic test. Um, and so when I, she was able to speak with her new half sister and then they sent pictures and I sent pictures of my mother and they sent pictures of her. And it was crazy. It was crazy to see. I was like, oh, you thought you looked like your sisters. No, you look like this sister. I mean, the same cheekbones. I mean, and you know, just certain similarities in health both of them having knee issues, which I'm getting now too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> knee issues, hip issues, you know, having like similar health, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah. So as you all continue to learn about the family mm -hmm. and you said there were twists and turns and that you had colorful conversations, mm -hmm. um, were those colorful conversations around we don't know you, don't want to know you. Were they more around, let's talk a little bit more? Were they really, did they say, yeah, this is a prank call, I don't believe you kind of thing? How did it actually transpire? So when you do DNA tests with Ancestry, um, when the results come up, it'll tell you like, who's your like closest DNA connection? And there was a, my, my cousin was there, who's the daughter of my, um, my aunt. So she was there and then there was like the second cousin or second, um, cause I was logged in as my mother. So it was saying like, there's someone who could be your first cousin or your sister. 
Um, so they had the name, I don't want to say the name on air, but they had the name um, there. And then he had a third person who um, I wind up connecting. I could see that person was pretty active on Ancestry. So I, I messaged um, that person and she's like, yeah, that's my grandmother. And um, so we had a chat and we had a phone call and then I was able to talk with both of them. She got her grandmother on the call and her grandmother's kind of the same age as my mother. So that's an interesting conversation, just thinking about the dates and how we put all that together. And she was, you know, she she shared what, you know, I said, look, I, I'm, I'm not trying to encroach. I don't want anything from you all. I'm just trying to figure out who I am and who's who's my family and help my mother understand some some questions she had about her upbringing. And um, so my half aunt was like, you know, she started having these conversations about outside children, me and bringing the outside kids home, which <laughs> is what something that was, you know, it happened in those days. But I'm mm -hmm. like, well, that's not really how this happened because this is my grandmother and this is my mother and my uncle. Um, so some of it was a little confusing and we, we were trying to connect and get together and meet because they live not they live in Tennessee, not too far from here. Um, but, you know, we're still in COVID. And um, my mother, um, over the last few months, has been having health issues. So she's been in a nursing home recently. Um, so, you know, we just haven't been able to really connect that much. And I just kind of wanted to give them a little bit of space. I didn't want to seem too intrusive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, then I found out the second part was that my um, cousin who took the genetic test, he found out that my uncle was not his father. Okay, so, <laughs> so let's take a station break. When we come back, we'll explore that further. Every story has a hidden element that is not often shared. Hidden Stories, Healed Now with host Vicki Wright Hamilton, seeks to share the hidden gems in real life experiences. Our guests are ordinary people sharing their stories of overcoming insurmountable odds while providing hope and inspiration. Welcome back. So you said your cousin found out that that was not his father? But my uncle wasn't not his, his father. father. And he was very, if you remember last time on the show, he was very hesitant yes. to do the DNA test. So, I mean, I mean, and my heart dropped when he called me. He said, he's not my father. And I was like, what? I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, but what does it say? Who is, because it gives you all this information. So I'm like, he's like, I don't want to know. I don't care. I'm done with it all. And I was like, you sure? I was like, but you're, go talk to your mother. Your mother's living, right? He's like, yeah. I said, you need to go talk to your mother about this. And, and you can see, like, just click the screen. You can see, he's like, I don't want to know, you know? So, I mean, he took a different approach. I mean, that data's there for him whenever he <clears throat> decides that he may want to be curious. Um, so unfortunately, I kind of hit a dead end in knowing 100% if the man who I know is my grandfather is my uncle's um, grandfather, um, uncle's father, because he's a year older than my mother. But I mean, I've got like a 98% gut that it's the same man because mm -hmm. the timelines are really interesting and the other thing I mean and I've researched this man my biological grandfather and mm -hmm. I continue to research I was just doing research this morning before I came here um, but he was 43 when my grandmother had my uncle at 17 so that is something that you know I may never and probably will never know right, the intricacies of that relationship. But I can only deduct from how my grandmother treated my mother that it wasn't a consensual relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I mean, to have two children with the same man and it not be consensual is kind of hard when, you know, she wound up being, a, being put into the shotgun marriage. And then he got married a few months later, from what I understood from my new half aunt. He got married um, a few months, you know, after my grandmother got married, and then my aunt, my aunt was my uncle was born, then my half auntie was born, and then a year later, my my grandmother had my mother, like a year to the day of my my uncle, um, and then he had another child. So it's like, 
I don't know. You know, I don't know what to think. I mean, she said he was a very handsome man, which I'm like, I'm sure he was. <laughs> um, when I looked into his census records of his family, he was considered mulatto. Um, at, as an early child, like in 1910, he was considered, he was born in 1909. Um, so I'm guessing that's where like the European side comes from, because I can look through the Facebooks of all these people who are like second, third, and fourth cousins. Um, and I've also done my African ancestry since the last time we got together. Wow. Wow. What did you learn from the African ancestry? So I learned that I am um, a descendant of the Balanta people from um, Guinea Bousseau, Guinea um, the Tende, Ten, is it Mende and Tende people from Sierra Leone and Mandinka from Senegal. Wow. So I am African. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned. I am African. And it makes sense why I have this deep urge to go to Africa and live in Africa. Oh, that's where you want to live. I do at some point. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So now that you're learning all of this about your ancestry, mm -hmm. and I know you're working to finish the book, is there a next step after this? Is there something else that you want to do? Do you have an urge to complete something else? You know, I just want to continue to find the stories because even, I mean, I feel like I'm only like hitting the surface, right? There's so many stories when just to recall and like, as I said last time, to say the names of my ancestors, um, to know, like even in rewriting, going through the chapters and editing to say, oh, I knew this grandfather in Alabama, but then to say George, or to say Grandma Carrie, to have their names and to you know honor them in that way is really, really important to me. Um, some things have changed in the book where the bean pie was more front and center. It's more um, a secondary storyline at this point because I don't have all the data. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've learned is that you know I don't wanna make something up. This is mm -hmm. not um, a, a fictional story. Mm -hmm. This is a, a really kind of more literary nonfiction because I'm building, especially with my great great aunt and her early upbringing, I'm mm -hmm. rebuilding it through history and data and, and other stories that I'm able to find out. Mm. So um, do you think you and your other family will get together? You know, I hope so. I, I, I want to reach back out um, and I've kind of postponed it because my mom has been um, trying to rehab herself. And so it's something I really want to get my mother together with her half sister, but I've been waiting and then, you know, all this COVID stuff and everything. But I, I hope so. I mm -hmm. hope so. I'm not giving up on it. Do you feel like the, they're going to be receptive um, from I the think, conversation? I mean, they were, they were like, like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and when they saw my mom's picture, they were like, mm -hmm. yeah, she one of us. <laughs> it was kind of, it was kind of like that. And, you know, my husband told me something, you know, he gave me a good suggestion. He said, you know, don't go in trying to figure out like every nuance to the story, but just start the relationship from today. Right. Right. And so, right. yeah. And growing and developing right. from today. Right. Just get today. to know each other as we are. And don't try mm -hmm. to, you know, because we don't know what that relationship was like with mm -hmm. my grandmother and, you know. And you don't know how those nuances are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing when we're looking at our ancestry. It's another thing when we find someone, it's like, oh my gosh, I want to know who you are. I want to know if this is real. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reason I was asking if they, um, as you talk to them, did they go, mm, who are you? Is because there's so many scammers out there. There's people who are doing ancestry. Oh, I'm related to you. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. I know so-and-so. And it's just because they saw a name come up that they were trying right. to do relations. Right. So we're going to take a station break. And when we come back, we're going to see if there's a question or a comment from our audience. We'll be right back. Every story has a hidden element that is not often shared. Hidden Stories, Healed Now, with host Vicki Wright Hamilton, seeks to share the hidden gems in real life experiences. Our guests are ordinary people sharing their stories of overcoming insurmountable odds while providing hope and inspiration. Welcome back. 
So let's talk a little bit more about this book. Now, I know you want to let the secrets out, you know, as you're um, putting this book together, but you've talked a little bit about the twist. Mm -hmm. So where does the bean pie fit now? And how is that a part of this as you're continuing to move forward? You know, the bean pie was what sort of triggered my curiosity about my great great aunt and which opened up, you know, questions about my mother, my grandmother and myself as somebody who's carrying on the tradition of the bean pie. But I've been doing a lot of research. I've been talking to a lot of elders about the bean pie and really trying to understand that context. And I don't want to say you know, carte blanche, you know, my aunt created the bean pie because there was, there's a deeper history there and I'm still, that may be a second book. But since that, since the last time I was on, I have begun writing articles for the Muslim Journal, um, sort of highlighting other people who are creators of the bean pie. So I've written a story about um, um, Sister Pasha and her husband, Imam Pasha, who were here in Atlanta, who are here in Atlanta. He's since passed away. But I've written an article about them, and I have some other articles that I'm working on that will be in the Muslim Journal about the bean pie. But I've made it more secondary. It's more like the four generations of faith, family, fortitude, and forgiveness are first, and how the bean pie really triggered that story. Um, and I'll still tell her story related to the bean pie, but I'm not going to say she's the only one. Um, I did find my aunt reference in some books related to the Nation of Islam, so that was super exciting um, to see her, uh, you know, mention. Uh, but it still takes more research. Mm -hmm. So when we think about, um, so we you have the bean pie um, process that you're going through because mm -hmm. you've been um, following the generations of creating the bean pie, mm -hmm. and now that you found others that are creating the bean pie, do you, is there any is there any correlation, or it just so happens that that they they did it separately? Well, there's there's um, a book that was um, published, I believe, last year, the year before, about Sister Claire Muhammad, and there's a part two and three of the books that are trying to raise funds for that part of the book, and I think that may have some. Um, secrets uncovered <laughs> in that. But I know there's another uh, sister, Amanla, and her family is very large. And she's credited with having made one of the first bean pies that Elijah Muhammad ate. Mm -hmm. um, but my aunt is still in there because she was she had a business where she was making the bean pies. So, you know, it's just going to take more time. And, mm -hmm. and with the time we're in, it's a little more limiting. And, mm -hmm. and I'm working and traveling back and forth, caring for my mother and, you know, just all the things that women do. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand. So I understand. I'm, I'm trying to do my best to, to keep it going and kind of keep all the balls in the air mm -hmm. um, to finish the book and to write these other articles and just keep, you know, keep, it's a it's a life journey. I don't, you know, I don't know it's going to be one thing that just triggers, you know, the end of the story, mm -hmm. um, but I'm working on it. So... How do you tell someone or advise someone when they go down through these journeys and they get and they find secrets, how to deal with their emotions, mm -hmm. how to understand and forgive? Um, you know, a lot of times we don't share information in the family. Mm -hmm. You know, those are secrets people take to their, you know, to their mm -hmm. grave. But when you find out and it's discovered, how, what would you say to someone if they're doing this discovery and they do find hidden jewels, hidden things that are there and things about their family and, and it's a shock to them? How would you advise they deal with that emotionally and to forgive so that they can continue to move forward? Um, I think it's two parts. One is just how do you deal with the information, right? And so for me, like when I first found out about my um, like my grandfather Green um, and finding his aunt and, and finding his daughter, excuse me, and talking to her, I didn't immediately tell my mother. Like mm -hmm. I had to process through and make sure I was cool because I wanted to be calm because I wasn't sure how she was going to react. So I think just being, taking your time, like there's no rush, right? This stuff has been hidden for, could be a hundred years, 50 <laughs> years. So there's no rush, you know, just kind of I, I like to document, so I'm writing, right? Whether that's journaling, you know, you don't have to be writing a book. Um, you could just be journaling. <clears throat> I'm a big journaler. I've been journaling my whole life. 
Um, so um, just taking your time and just processing through it. But then I think in terms of telling other people, you know, it's a it's a delicate dance. You know, I mean, just recently I shared with my my mother's sister um, about everything we had been finding because this has kind of been like my mom, me and my mom's thing, you know, which has really made us closer over this last two years. And I'm super grateful for that, given the challenges she's having right now with her health. So. Um, but I would say just, you know, take your time. Don't, you know, blurt stuff out because it can be hurtful to other people, you know. So just, you know, be balanced with it. Well, that's good advice. Let's see if we have a question or a comment from the audience. Hi, I love your journey and your story. Um, and I'd be interested in looking for some of my family history. What different outlets do you use to get started? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of mine was ancestry, but I would also say if you know like where your family comes from, there's a lot of um, associations or um, like almost historical societies in that particular um, area. So a lot of my family um, is from Opelika, Alabama. So they have like a historical society and that's usually the place where they keep like all the big books with like the church books and the Bibles and you know anything that may have come from that area. Um, that's usually where you can find those, um, those resources. So you may be able to get to those places, they may or may not be open now, but at least calling them and saying, hey, I'm trying to find, you know, this person, you know, do you have anything? Or I know they went, they lived here, or they went to this church. This is the time period, you know, would you have anything that I could check or you could check or, you know, if you think of like um, those store, uh, what's his name, um, Chip Gates, when he has his TV, you know, with that part when they, they always show you like they're going through the books with the white gloves on. <laughs> like those are the places that, you know, it'd be good to find. And of course, churches too. You know, back in the day, people always kept the Bibles with the family history. Like somebody had this baby and they got baptized on this day. Those are good, at least a good place to start. Thank you for your question. You know, as we continue to think about our family and our history, you know, once we're born, we're born, right? You don't get to choose your family. It is what it is. And, but it doesn't mean that there can't be hardships when you find out secrets that have never been told. And, you know, I want to commend you for your openness and being open-minded so that you didn't let any secret to destroy you. And that you've decided that no matter what you find, you want to know more. You're going to dig more. And it takes a special kind of person to be able to say, I can accept. It's not a problem. Let's move forward. And to be able to recognize I want to forgive for whatever I find, for whatever happened back in that time, whatever was going on. Because the reality is, is we'll never know everything that happened because the person who was going through it had feelings. The person that, you know, was a recipient of it had feelings. When they're not alive anymore, you never get both sides of the story. And there's always two sides to every story, as we know. So I um, want to thank you for joining us. And you just have to continue to keep us posted. Um, I know that that book is going to come out and it's going to be great. And it's going to allow us to understand more about the story, as well as the secret to the bean pies <laughs> and understand where all of that came from. So I'm looking forward to learning more about that. And I want to thank you for providing our audience um, places where they can go to search if, they're, if they want to, right? If there is a desire to want to go and find those things. So thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Hidden Stories Healed Now. Remember, for every story you tell is the freedom that you gain and the joy that you give to someone else. See you next time.